It is so cold. And so I'm done with it. That's why I'm going to Puerto Rico. <laughs> build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. That's right, I'm in Puerto Rico. So excited. I'm down here with about 30 other certified aquascape contractors. We have four days of fun and education. Tomorrow, I know we're doing a social media class. We're also going to build the water feature at Bogar San Miguel. There's going to be so much to see and do on this aquascape event. We're calling Pont Simonium. From the resort we're staying at, walking the beautiful beaches, hanging out by the pool, and playing games, the incredible dinners we'll have, to the really fun excursions in the mountains we'll be going on. I cannot wait to show you that part. We'll be catching plenty of sun during the day, and hopefully, some unbelievable sunsets. Speaking of unbelievable sunsets, but more importantly, the beautiful weather makes me wonder what it's like back at home for Chris and what he's up to. Um, it's a little, uh, little snowy and it's cold. It's just cold. With that, this week is the perfect time to do some of these winter maintenance visits. There's not a whole lot that goes into them, but there's definitely one thing. <laughs> So winter maintenance isn't all about checking in on ponds and throwing snowballs. Well, actually it is, at least about the first one. So while doing these winter maintenance visits, it's important to remember why we do this as part of our diamond and platinum service packages. One, it's an added layer of insurance to our customers' ponds. It's also giving them more peace of mind knowing that their pond is being well taken care of. But what it's doing for us as business people, it's also adding a revenue stream during some of those leaner months when construction and installation aren't necessarily going on. And lastly, it's providing our teammates here at Aquascape an opportunity to stay employed year round while still providing value to our customers. One of the neat things about staying in communication with the customers year round, when I called the homeowner and said that I was coming to perform the winter maintenance, she asked if we could take care of something that is specific to her pond. She has a sheet of plexiglass that's separating the pond from the negative edge, preventing the fish from swimming over. She had made me aware that that thing had shifted and kind of fallen over. So this is the perfect opportunity while I'm here to go ahead and fix that. So now that we're here, the first thing we're gonna do is establish whether or not the de-icer and bubbler are actually working. And by the looks of things, it looks like we're good to go. So the next step is gonna be to make sure that that mechanical filter is free of debris. Whether it be a skimmer box or an intake bay, the reason so that the pump can access the water freely and operate as it should. We got everybody here. We're about ready to get started. Can't wait to see what Greg says about work-life balance. So one of the things that we talked about was monitoring the water level and the water feature. After inspection, I found that this one actually happened to be overfilled while trying to clean out the mechanical filter, which is the intake area. So what I want to do is I want to drop a clean out pump in, drain that water down just to the top of the aqua block so that I can make sure that all of that debris is cleaned off the aqua block panels to allow for maximum infiltration in the event that this thing ever fills back up. All right, so that pretty much takes care of it. These winter service visits don't offer a lot of heavy lifting, but they do offer a lot of value. Not only does it allow us to get in front of our customers' ponds and make sure that everything is operating as it should, but it also allows us the opportunity to get in front of our customers, strengthening the overall relationship and really letting them know that we care. So with that being said, it's on to the next one. 
All right, Jack, we're sitting here at Hogar at San Miguel. Tell me a little bit about what we're doing. We're gonna be doing a medium sphere on top of this Aquabasin 45 with three one watt lights and a core light up on the top for color changing light. So with the hole already being 95% dug, an Aquabasin being one of the easiest things you can install as far as water features go. And we've got Jack, Josh, and an entire bus load of contractors coming down. I think might be able to finish this thing in under an hour, but we'll see how it goes. You ready, Pong guy? I'm board ready. <laughs> the bigger question is, is Jack ready? Um, he's starting the day off a little rough. Uh, okay. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? For everyone that doesn't know me, I'm Jack with Aquascape. We're gonna kick things off. We're gonna be doing this medium stack slate sphere. As you can see, the hole's already dug right now. Kinda go down maybe two or three more inches, and then we're gonna pop this basin in, backfill it, and then we're gonna be good to go. Hopefully it's gonna be smooth sailing today. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Good job, Jack. Thank you. Say, buenos dias, Ludi. Go ahead, tell us about this place. <laughs> este, ¿verdad? Este hogar se compone de jóvenes de 12 a 17 años. This facility is made of young boys from 2 to 17 years old. Estos jóvenes de 12 a 17 años son removidos por el departamento de la familia por la 246. The boys are removed from their homes by the law of 246 of Puerto Rico, which is a anti-abuse law. The boys are removed and brought here. Y gracias por venir al hogar San Miguel y dejar esta semillita que tanto ellos necesitan de ustedes. Uh, she said, thank you for coming here and taking time to do this for them. They really appreciate it. Thank you. And this is for you. All right, if you can see that, we've got the top of this set about three inches lower than the grade over here. The reason we do that is really to make sure the thing looks recessed. When it sticks up too high, it looks ridiculous. I think what's so awesome about the Aqua Basin is there's so many different toppers you can put on top to make it your own. Stack slate spears, stack slate urns, different types of urns, basalt columns, all kinds of great stuff. Here, we're clearly gonna be doing a spear. While we're doing this, Chris is actually over in the sandbox working on another Aqua Basin feature. Chris, what are you working on over there? Yep. You got that right, Brian. I'm currently here in the Sandbox Studio getting ready to install some of our faux basalt columns on this aqua basin. So these basalt columns are a newer product developed by our product development team. And the reason I'm back here is I actually wanna get my hands on it and test not only installation practices, but also the product itself and work with that product development team to see if we can work out any kinks before it goes into production. So we've got this bib liner. The main reason we put the bib liner is just to catch the splash. When we turn this on, as it comes up over the top, it's gonna splash off. The other thing, when it hits those Mexican river pebbles at the bottom, it tends to want to even splash more. You can see the liner is kind of like sloped in on all the sides. So because of this, when the water hits the liner, it should shed all right back into the aqua basin. So you can see we got the sphere down in here. You can see inside we put a bunch of rock, smaller stones. That just helps keep this thing nice and stable so it's not gonna move around at all. You can see Jack's got core light and he's hooking up the, the tubing right now. And then you can see Ed's got the hole for the pump. We'll feed that to Ed, and that's all of our plumbing. Bada boom, bada bing. Say it, Ed. <laughs> bada boom, bada bing. <laughs>
we're now we're finished with the faux basalt columns. So this is a new product that was actually contrived based off of the old product, which is the natural basalt columns. Let's go take a look at the old ones and compare and contrast the differences. All right, so here's a palette of the natural basalt columns. A couple of the challenges that we ran into installing these, one was weight. These are very, very heavy being natural stone and it's a very dense stone being Mongolian basalt. So freight is an issue, which makes it more expensive, but it also makes it much more difficult to install in the field. If you have physical limitations or you're a one man show, these can be very cumbersome to install. The second is, is we started to run into supply chain issues about a year and a half to two years ago. So we wanted a creative solution where we could still have the basalt column look, which is why we created the faux basalt rocks. So with that being said, and after looking at the natural basalt columns, you can tell that there's really not much aesthetic difference between the two. What I do love about it is the difference in the ease of installation. These are extremely lightweight, very easy to move around and adjust and really manipulate how you want them to look on top of your reservoir, the large aqua basin or a set of aqua blocks. Because they're so lightweight and easy to move around, they require a lot less time putting the fountainscape together, which makes it that much more profitable. You or I in the field installing these. So I'm gonna take the feedback that I learned from installing these, take it back to our product development team and give them two thumbs up in my book. Here in the sandbox, we always try and take everything to its fullest potential, not unlike what Brian's doing in Puerto Rico right now. Well, Jack, that's a wrap. We're finished. We got water running. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, what was it, two hours and we had it done? Two hours, landscaped, we had to dig the hole. Still, it was nice that they had 90% of it dug for us. What's your favorite thing about aqua basins? <laughs> How many different options we could put on top of those? I mean, any of our toppers can go on top of these aqua basins. What's your favorite topper? I like the spheres. You those like are my spheres? personal, and not just because we did it today, but those are my favorite. Because it kind of looks like the Death Star. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go, guys. There's the finished. It looks incredible. And in a couple of short hours, we got this thing installed. If we can do it, you guys can do it too. Thank you so much, Hogar San Miguel, for the opportunity to share this with you. Hope you guys enjoy it for years and years to come. Okay, so we're done here. We're actually gonna go on a fun excursion, a little field research, check out a natural waterfall. I just happened to find this thing on the side of the road. So I'm super excited. He talked about there just being massive, massive rocks. I'm excited just to kind of hike around and see what we get to see. Maybe some inspiration for some future jobs. Here we go. inspiration we're talking about that is incredible go stand by those rocks so we can give everybody a scale i mean those are 15 foot boulders just enormous so awesome one thing i always try to do when i see these waterfalls is study what they look like compared to what we build and again if you look at the style of our waterfalls we try to get so much of our inspiration from nature big rock on one side big rock on the other side something in between the idea is the water is eroded away the earth leaving back behind the stones that just can't move it's shuffled a bunch of stuff in through here you can even see like some of these little falls you know again big rock big rock something in between the fewer rocks you can use the more natural it ends up looking the challenge we always have is like how do we layer the stone back off to the left and the right and what an experience it would be if we could ever work with stones like the size of that. Just be insane. So another great view of all those waterfalls. Big rock, big rock. Even these simple ones, right? Taking two rocks, pitching them together and letting that water come in between. And then look at this. Right over the top. Oh my God. So cool. I'm in absolute heaven right now. This is like, I could literally do this for weeks and weeks and weeks. Just hike up and down, stuff like this. It's so incredible. I just can't get enough. Look at how crystal clear that water is. Now that is a cool waterfall. Look at the size of those boulders. part of the vacation. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to be at my home, away from home, Aqualand. Great, great time, but so impressed on the amount of stuff that got done while I was gone. We got the deck finished, and the deck is super cool. So happy with the deck. If you guys remember, it used to be a deck that went from one side all the way to the other side. Now it's got this really curved radius. It allows me to come further out to the water, really get that bird's eye view of looking down at the fish. I love the curve aesthetically, 
everything else is so squared off in here. I'm not sure if I want to put a railing here or not. I'll let you guys decide. Put it in the comments. Do you want to see a railing or should I leave it open? The other really cool thing that happened was the addition of the sand bottom floor. But It would be really cool to get some big rocks down in here, but there was no way we could carry the size rocks I wanted to put in here. So we said, why don't we take some of the artificial rocks that we used back with an artist of the year build, Chris Suing to be exact, bring in some of those fake rocks and put those in here. Greg came in, kind of gave us his two cents, blessing on it, what he wanted to see done with them. Are you good creating like a little bit more of a scene in here using well, these fake rocks? That's pretty big though. I don't know. Well, I guess we have more room, right? Yeah, I've got that one over there because the deck didn't get as big as we had hoped. Move it out a little bit so the fish can go behind it. Okay. Pull it so that they okay. can kind of circle it and even, even on this side. But it'll look sweet. With the, we don't have it cut out yet, but okay. like seeing that view. Will those float? I'm gonna wait them down. They will. Yeah. But I'm gonna wait them down. Yeah, I think that looks pretty dope. My concern with it here, I want the fish to be like really swimming around in here now. You said you might put a plant there. Why don't we see if we can move it back in that corner, what it All would right. look like. All right. Okay, okay, listen, listen to me. I think it would be awesome if fish would disappear behind there. You want to spun 180? No, actually, it's fine. Okay. As long as there's enough room for fish to go behind and come out. So I prefer over there. And plus it bounces it out. One rock on this side, one rock on the back. You don't like it as much. Chris doesn't like it as much. So <laughs> glad I'm pushing it. The whole rock 180 degrees. So at that point, it sticks out a little bit. All right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, that looks good. I want people to feel like they're on an island fish swimming all around. So I want this completely, you know, all these views right here. We put them in here, and the thing we forgot about was what they were made out of. They're made out of a polyurethane foam. So as we started filling this pond up, the stones started floating all over the place. Back to our pond, and a couple things happened. First, we didn't turn our jet pumps on, so our whole jet pump line started floating. Then the other thing that happened, you can't tell, but this rock shouldn't do that. <laughs> See how the rock is rocking? Yeah, that's not normal. I knew they'd float. We tried to put sandbags underneath it, cross braces to make sure it wouldn't float, but now I don't know what we're gonna do. We started thinking of different ideas and how we could anchor those things down. Nothing was really working, but with all challenges, something else happens. And the solution was actually Chris Hansen saying, what if we added some of our stack slate features in here? And I couldn't really picture it, but Chris said, let me start playing around with it and see what you think when I get done. So we added some of our spheres and I think it looks awesome. So on this side, you get to see the other three spheres and I love it from this point of view because here we've got more of this seat wall height. I'm really picturing this being a more popular area now to sit and hand feed the fish where before everything was fed from the koi window down over there. We're really trying to turn this into way more of a show place for our koi, not just a place to purchase the fish. And so I think when this thing's all done, it's gonna be epic. So what else did we do back here? Oh, I know, check out the intake bay. So it wasn't a new idea. We just stole the idea off the first one we did and this one works so effortlessly. Water just gets pulled in through these bulkhead fittings and over to a vault over here. We wanted to do the same thing here. The main reason I wanted to move the pumps over here though was to make it easier for the retail store staff to get to all the filter media here. So water is drawn through these four three inch bulkhead fittings, pulled into this box here where our pumps sit and push the water through jets and then eventually to our wetland filter. So as that water moves through here, we'll probably add a lot more filter media in here and make sure that we send the water to our wetland 100% debris free, which will then allow the wetland filter to really work on that biological filtration. This is our mechanical filter. Now we've got to build a biological filter. So of course, one of the last things I wanted to show you guys was the koi window, how awesome this looks. So let's cut this thing away. And then as I started thinking to myself, like why would I do that now when you could come next week and watch the rest of it? No, the main reason I don't wanna show you everything is look at this. It's cloudy, cloudy water. So what I really wanna show you guys is how fast this water is gonna clear up by installing one of the world's most aggressive, <laughs> I don't know what the word is, but it's a big indoor koi filter built out of an existing above ground swimming pool. And you guys saw us bring the pools in, so watch how we transform that above ground swimming pool into a 
wood. Awesome, awesome koi filter. And turn this into crystal clear water like you see in all of our other features. In the meantime, tell all your friends because this is gonna be really cool next week. Not nearly as cool as the koi filter, but tell all your friends, like, comment, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you then. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.